Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, we're a little bit late. We had a bit of a technical, technical hitch there. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. So welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with John and Michelle. Yes, welcome, everybody. If you... If you're here with us, we see a couple of you have joined us. Yes, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Absolutely. And tonight we are doing a full moon. Uh, we're going to look at the full moon, which mm -hmm. is uh, a very important one because it's a super full moon, isn't it? Is, it is, indeed. Super full moon. Yeah. And also, tonight we're going to be talking about embracing, embracing change. change. Embracing change. Yes. And maybe some of you are experiencing change, um, like everyone. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so I think this is an important topic tonight. So welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we love being with you on a Sunday evening. And we're so pleased that you can join us. So welcome. Yeah. Welcome. And we're going to start tonight as we always do. And that's by doing the really important work, which isn't work at all. I think we need to change the, the word work. There's got to be a new... Yeah, play. A play. Okay, we're going to do the, the most important play to start off with, and that is uh, centering ourselves in the present moment and a little bit of stillness, quietening our minds and uh, centering ourselves into our bodies. So um, if you can, uh, just let us know where you are watching from. We love to get comments from you. If you've got questions, if you uh, sound, find something of interest or value, then uh, just send us a little comment or a heart. We love getting hearts, don't we? We do. We do love getting hearts. Love getting hearts. And also share it on your timelines because that way it goes out. You know, Facebook restrict uh, the flow of our work quite radically, actually. Yeah. And so by sharing it, you help spread the light. So It'd if you great. can do that, it's really that. good. So welcome, everybody. And thank you for the hearts that we are getting. We really love getting those. Thank you. It shows us that we're not just talking to fresh a, air, fresh air <laughs> yeah. that there are some humans on the other side of the of the camera. So thank you. Yeah. Mm. So let's start this evening by making ourselves comfortable and uh, gently closing our eyes and focusing on what is absolutely real in this moment from an, an experiential point of view. And you can feel your body. So we know that this body is real and we're feeling it from the inside out. So we are drawing our awareness from all other times and all other places and we are dropping down into our body. The body is a wonderful portal into presence and presence is the healing energy, the healing balm for all of our lives, for any situation we find ourselves in with any challenging circumstance. Healing comes through the portal of presence. So we drop our awareness into the body and we become aware of our feet. The feet may be resting on the floor or wherever they're resting. Just give your awareness to the feet. And if they are on the floor, see if you can just, uh, with your imagination, connect with the earth beneath your feet. And say thank you to Mother Earth for all the goodness that she provides. She provides not only the physical molecules for our body, but she also provides the oxygen for our lungs, she provides the, um, all the food, all the, the lovely, lush, uh, delicious food that we eat. It all comes from Mother Divine, all the water, all the liquid that we drink, it comes from Mother Divine. So let's just spend a moment or two connecting uh, with Mother Earth. We had the Earth Day this week, and uh, it is a time, I believe, of focusing on the, on the gift that the Earth has for us humans. The, uh, the earth peoples in the same way that an apple tree apples. So we are very much a, a product of Mother Earth, which is beautiful. So thank you. Thank you, Mother Earth. And now we bring our awareness from our feet, slowly, gradually. We draw the energy of Mother Divine up our legs, through our ankles, through our calf muscles, into the knees. Relaxing the bones and the muscles as we move up through our thighs into our hips, relaxing the hips, moving our awareness up our spine, vertebra by vertebra, just relaxing each vertebra as we come to it, relaxing it and letting go of any stress or tension. If there's any pain there, just forgive it, which means let go. Come up to the neck now, relaxing the shoulders. Bring your awareness up the back of your head to the crown 
of your scalp and now connect with Father Sky. So now feel an energy coming up from Mother Earth through your feet, up your spine, right to the very crown of your head, bursting out the top like a, like a fountain, a fountain of light. Maybe you like to see it as a silver gold light fountain coming out. So you're drawing Mother Energy up and releasing it up to Father Sky. And Father Sky sends the solar energy down through our body to Mother Earth. And we are the conduit between the two. We are the dance between the Mother and the Father. And this dance is our human experience. And we're very privileged, very fortunate to be part of this dance at this time. Because this is a very auspicious time. It's a time of massive transformation of physical consciousness or physical matter into a higher frequency a higher frequency which is aligned with the fifth dimensional world, moving from the fourth dimension up to the fifth dimension. And we're privileged to be part of this process, an intimate part of the dance. And now we bring our awareness down the front of our face into our forehead, releasing any worry lines, down into our cheek cheeks and into our jaw, relaxing our tongue, relaxing our eyelids, just becoming aware of any tension in your face, become aware of any pictures behind your eyelids, just notice them, become aware of any thoughts in your mind, once again just notice them, become aware of the breath and the breathing maybe from the tip of your nose, if you're breathing through your nose, just become aware of the temperature change between the in-breath and the out-breath and the out-breath and the in-breath. Resting your tongue maybe lightly against your front teeth and just dropping your awareness now down to your shoulders, down your arms, into your hands. Being grateful for the incredible dexterity and the gift of the hands, the faculty of touch. How beautiful is it touch another human being, to hold a cup of water. We're so blessed to have the faculty of touch. And now let our, let's bring our awareness back to the breath and we take a very deep breath in, drawing it right the way down into our torso, blowing our body up like a big ball and then a long, beautiful, relaxing, releasing breath out. Just let it all go. A beautiful sigh. And now take another deep breath in, filling your whole body up right down to those toes and to the top of your head. And a lovely long breath out. And a third very deep breath in, pulling your tummy out like a big ball so that you're blowing up and bringing the air right down. And then that lovely long sigh out, just releasing everything, letting go of any thoughts, any emotions, any sensations. Just let it go. And let's just sit quietly for a moment, connecting with the sacred essence of presence which rests within our hearts. So we bring our awareness into the middle of our chest. And we send a ray of beautiful light to anyone who needs healing tonight. Anyone in your awareness who could do with some healing, be it physical, emotional, mental. And as we do that, we know there is a profound energy shift of healing. You might like to see it as a beautiful colour going from your heart to their heart. Feel that connection. For feeling is the very energy of creation in our universe. And now we extend this healing, this ray of healing to encompass Mother Earth and all who live on her. We're going through a birthing process and no birthing process is easy. So we extend this healing energy to all on Mother Earth. Not only the human life, but also the animals. The birds, the fish, the insects. The plant life. The crystals, the rocks. The oceans and lakes the mountains, all life forms.
and we extend this healing light out into the cosmos because the cosmos is also go through a, going through a birthing process. And we call on the higher energies, the energies of the angelic realm, to direct healing energy into this universe, this solar system and this planet. And we give thanks for the guidance and their support we invited into our lives. And as we ask, it is given. Now we take another very deep breath in, drawing the air right the way down to our feet. And then that beautiful, long, releasing breath out. And gently, when you're ready, open your eyes and just become aware of how you feel in this moment. Feeling is healing. So just become aware of how you feel in this moment. Do you feel a bit more centered, a bit more quiet inside, a bit more at ease? That's mm. beautiful. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Thank John. You. It was lovely. Thank Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we have a full moon almost outside. Yeah, we saw it rising this evening and it looked pretty full, didn't it? Yeah, it's, it's actually only full in South Africa in the early hours of the 27th, which oh, is okay. Tuesday. Right. But in some parts of the world will be full tomorrow and it looks yeah. pretty full already. Yeah. So we're definitely feeling, feeling the fullness of the, of the full moon. And this one's, it, it's, a, it's a really powerful full moon. I always say that, but this one's probably more so than ever. It's a super moon which means that it's bigger and closer, so we actually feel its energy more. And the energy of the full moon really is about, um, moon. the moon in astrology is about emotion, about feeling. It's the feminine aspect. The sun is the masculine, the moon is the feminine. And we have an abundance of feminine planets, this full moon. Um, so I want to just chat to you a little bit about that. I have done a, blogs, a vlog uh, the other day, so you can have a look on my page. You'll be able to see that with some more information. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of information. And what page is that? It's my uh, Michelle McLuhan Life Navigator page. So on you Facebook. Can find it there on Facebook, yeah, and Instagram. So basically, a full moon is always time of, a, of culmination. So the, the cycle, the moon cycle starts at new moon, when the sun and the moon are together. And then two weeks later, the sun is opposite the moon, and it shines its light on the moon, and we have a full moon, and it's always in the opposite sign. So this month, this astrological month, we've got the sun in Taurus. So this full moon is in Scorpio, and Scorpio is feminine, as well as all the planets in Taurus. There's four planets in Taurus, and one planet being the moon. We'll call it her planet for now. She's in Scorpio. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of... of um, of feminine energy and it's actually fixed feminine energy so when we have fixed energy in a in a um, sort of in an alignment there's often that feeling for some people of being stuck of kind of being unable to move forward um, but this is the this is actually the full moon of change in Scorpio Scorpio is about change Scorpio is about transformation it's the sign that basically rules transformation. So this is a very, very, very transformative full moon. Now not only is the moon sitting here opposite all these planets in Taurus, which is in itself it's a, it's a polarity, because if you look at Taurus as an energy, because astrology is energy, Taurus is about staying with what we know. It's the status quo. It's let's keep everything the way it is. Let's keep all our little ducks in a row. Let's not go into too much chaos. Let's kind of make everything orderly and practical and build something out of that. That's the energy of, of Taurus. Now with, with Scorpio opposite that, Scorpio is none of that. Scorpio is the breaking down of whatever doesn't serve so that something new can be reborn. That's the energy of Scorpio. So it's actually a very transformative energy. So in addition to that, the sun is, the sun is actually in a in a sort of a quite close relationship, this full moon, with the planet of change, which is Uranus, which I've been talking a lot about and will do for the rest of the year. 
um, so Uranus is the planet of change, in Taurus that's not that comfortable because Uranus wants to change, wants to get rid of stuff that isn't working, wants to move it out the way and Taurus hangs on and says no, 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 you can't move this, this shouldn't be changing. So there's already a polarity there. The Scorpio on the one hand saying, let's change, let's move, let's bring whatever needs to come up to the surface, up to the surface, so it can be cleared. And then the energy of Taurus saying, no, let's hold on to what we know. Let's hold on to the familiar. And then Uranus sitting there saying, no, but that's got to change. The familiar has got to change. The status quo has got to change. And then those, that alignment is actually in a square to the planet Saturn. So the big alignment for, for 2021 is the square between Uranus and Saturn, which is the old versus the new, which is change versus stay the same. And that's the energy that we're dealing with. It also represents limitation versus freedom. So that's what we offer. A lot of us are working with in our, in our private lives as well as the collective. It's this, this kind of polarity. Should I stay the same? Should I hang on? Should I... How should I deal with this? So it's, this is really highlighting this energy of change. And so that's why we thought we'd talk about embracing change because change is going to happen whether we like it or not, especially this year and last year. We don't have a lot of control over the outer world and how it changes. They okay, say so only two things are, are constant and that is taxation. Well, three things, taxation, <laughs> death, death and change. <laughs> Yeah, so, really you know, sure. although certain things change very slowly, everything, yeah. everything is changing. Yeah. Even granite rock is changing. Everything is changing. Because everything, every object, everything that's ever created in the physical universe is subject to something called time. And so everything changes. And sometimes uh, change happens quickly and other mm -hmm. times... Uh, change happens more gradually mm. but right now obviously from what Michelle says we're going through a period where um, rapid change is taking place at all all different levels and uh, that is not bad because you know if you're in a laboratory a scientific laboratory and you want to initiate some sort of uh, chemical reaction you normally got to heat it up and when you heat up something the molecules interact quicker so the possibility of new change happens quite quickly so you can create something new. So in all this change, there's massive opportunity for something new to be born. Mm. And I know that uh, from a, you know, if you think about Taurus, wants stability, it wants things to stay the same. And we've all got a bit of that within us. You know, the mind loves stability, but actually gets bored with stability as well. I mean, that's such a paradox going on with everyone. We, we, we want change, we get excited about change, but we fear change. Mm -hmm. And so that creates a bit of a conflict in us. And I, I suggest that right now, there's some tools that, uh, that we need to acquire to help us navigate through this um, period of uncertainty that we're going through. And to know that we're not being punished, that there's the opportunity for something to be brand, brand new born into the world and into our into our personal lives that's the opportunity and that comes by letting go letting go so that our hands are empty to embrace the new that's been given to us yeah you know at, at any one moment we can have that sort of paradox where um, what do we want to change in our lives and what do we want to keep from changing in our lives and there's, there's, there's often that paradox, so I really want to change that in my life, and I really don't want to change that in my life. And so that's a, that's a pull in itself, it's a conflict. Because everything of form, in form, is going to change. And it's changing. Everything, 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 everything that arises is going to change. Mm. It's always a so process. So our relationships mm. are going to change, our bodies are definitely going to change, the governments are definitely going to change. Any situation that arises is going to change. Um, it's almost change is almost the, the life force. If you think about your breath coming in and out, that's change all the time. You, you, our bodies are changing right now. We, we haven't got the same bodies as we did five minutes ago. Mm. But we resist change. Mm. And it's almost that we kind of almost resisting life in a way. Yeah, we, we are. We change. absolutely are. We're resisting life. 
the resistance to change is resistance of life and it's rather like yeah. driving your car through the Karoo and you only look in the rear view mirror and you just want the road ahead to be exactly yeah. the same as the road behind so you don't have to turn the steering wheel and that works pretty well in the Karoo you know which is a long deserty area <laughs> Uh, but when you come to the Western Cape and you have to go through the mountains, um, the rear view mirror doesn't help you much. You need to be very present with what is so that you can make the right decisions in the moment. And that's really the key to navigating this period of time that we're going through now is not to look yeah. backwards. And it's not to stretch your, your vision too far mm -hmm. in the front because you can't see what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. You have absolutely no idea around the corner and you don't need to know. What you do need to do, though, is to focus your awareness more fully in where you are at right now, which is called the present moment. Bring your awareness fully into this part of the dance right now. This just this one step you're taking right now. Another way we can look at this is to see that, um, let's look at the analogy of the ocean. The ocean, we can say, is a source of all creation on, on earth. I mean, all life originated in the ocean and came out of the ocean. So let's say that, let's use the analogy of the ocean as the source, the stability of all of life. And on the um, surface of the ocean, we get sometimes little ripples. Mm -hmm. And as they get near the uh, ocean shore, we call them waves. And they start gradually out and then they get bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. And uh, they, they become objects. So you know, some people get very attached to a certain wave and they write out a birth certificate for a certain wave and the wave gets bigger and they get very proud because their wave is now the biggest wave around. And then the wave heads for the rocks or the beach and it crashes. And then we walk around and we wear black and we write out a death certificate and we mourn that wave. And no, we don't do that. But that is, a, that is the cycle of life. So life is the ocean and the individual waves are the forms of life. And they might take the, the, um, the object or the um, um, expression as maybe a human being. They might take the expression as a relationship, as a career, as a physical locality. Mm -hmm. But they're all in transformation. The wave, no wave is static. It's forming, it's, it it's, it's developing, and then it is dissipating. Mm -hmm. Every single wave goes through that process, moment to moment to moment. Now, if we only know ourselves, and we, if we only know the world around us, as the wave, we're going to suffer deeply. Mm -hmm. Because every wave is destined to dissipate back into the sands of time. Yeah. Only when we know ourselves to be the, the ocean. ocean, playing with the form of the wave, playing with the form of the human expression, can we stand on that which doesn't change? And here's the key. So Taurus wants stability. Where is stability? Stability is not in the world of form because all form is in process of transformation and change. Stability comes in the formless. And that is our true essence. We, you know, we can give it different names. We can call it life. We can call it spirit. And as we stand more in that, which I prefer to use the word presence, mm. as we stand more in that presence, spirit, life, it's all exactly the same. It's not a thingness. It's a space. Mm. It's, it's the eternity that never changes. As we start, as we anchor our awareness more in that space mm. of presence, so we find our security. And then we can enjoy the process of transformation. We can enjoy being the human wave. We can enjoy a, the transformation of relationships or careers or financial systems or governments or even land masses. We can enjoy all of that because we're not threatened by it. We're not looking for our identity or our fulfillment in the objective world anymore because now we're in this lovely, beautiful, what's called space consciousness. We, in, we are... We are in love with life. We're fully embracing life in this moment, enjoying the play of form around us. And then this transformation process ceases to be scary and actually becomes a very exhilarating um, dance, doesn't it? Mm. And then by doing that, we're also holding a space. for. So if, if we see ourselves as the ocean, if we realize that we are the ocean, 
we actually hold a space for whatever comes in and out. So, you know, you're going you're to have your waves, your big waves that you're going to ride if you were a surfer, and you're going to have troughs where nothing's happening. But you actually hold the space for those. And that's the other theme of this full moon, is holding a space for whatever arises. So holding a space for the feelings that are arising right now and over the next few days and possibly over the next few weeks because they're not wrong. Those feelings that are arising need to be felt, need to be held um, in terms of a, whole, a space held for them, not hold, held onto. So Scorpio is fixed water and fixed water, if you look at wa a fixed water, fixed, what is fixed water? Fixed water is like a, a lake. Of water where um, there's a, there's, the water is contained so it's actually holding water and it might be smooth on the surface but underneath that there's great depth and Scorpio is the sign of depth so this is a time to actually allow yourself to feel whatever's coming up from the depths and just let it be there so hold the container as John said if you're in the if you're the ocean you can actually contain all of those, um, those emotions that come through you. You can, you can allow them to actually flow through you. So he has a, an emotion of fear. Oh, it's not wrong. I can just feel this fear. I can breathe and I can hold space for this fear. Or this anxiety or this sadness or this grief or whatever it is. That's what this full moon is. So if these feelings are coming up for you, or body sensations can also come up for you. I know somebody texted me just now and said, um, there's a bit of a resistance, she's going to be moving, and now she's got a sore, she's, she's sore in her body, because the body's resisting. So it's to just see, and connecting with our bodies, to say, what's my body telling me here? Am I in resistance? And very often, when we go into pain, we're going into resistance. Not always but very often. So it's to hold a, a very gentle space for what's arising right now because it's supposed to be coming up so that it can be felt and all we need to do is hold a space for that feeling and let it just flow through. Energy is, um, emotion is energy in motion. That's all it is. It's flowing through and that's what feminine energy is. Feminine energy is the holding space. That's what the moon is. It's holding space. It doesn't necessarily have to do anything. You don't have to fix it. You can just be with it. And isn't that what we always want other people to do for us? Hold us. Yeah, hold us. Because, uh, you know, um, so the full moon is the emotional energy, isn't it? Yes. It's the feminine energy. Yeah. And um, the feminine energy in its rightful place is the holding energy. It's the support of holding energy. And in the world, we don't really value the feminine energy too much because we value the masculine energy, the doing, the outgoing, the, 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 the sort of like objective uh, reality. We really focus on that. Mm -hmm. But this period that we're going through now is to honor that feminine. And that is the, the holding, the coming back, the nurturing, the allowing, the accepting. And that is very much connected to love, isn't it? The accepting, the holding, and the appreciating. Appreciating even uncertainty and change. And that's the beauty of this, of this, uh, of aligning with the energy that we're going through at the moment. And that's the, the topic which we have tonight, embracing change. What is embracing? It's accepting, it's holding, it's allowing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's to value change, not to see change as, as wrong. Change is absolutely constant and life as life plays with form, it's always changing. If something doesn't change, it tends to be, you know, decaying almost. Where life mm. is very much about the about the expression of, of newness. And that's really what we are going through at the moment. So, you know, I, I, I suggest that uh, one of the things I teach is, is public speaking. And a lot of people are very scared of getting up and, and speaking. And it's almost a fear of having your your ego annihilated, you know, what happens if I say something wrong and, you know, and so one of the ways around that, one of the ways of overcoming that uh, fear of public speaking is before you get up, uh, up to speak, you say, I am excited. I am excited. And what that does is changes your state from fear into something more. Yes, you've still got this fear in excitement. 
because excitement always contains the possibility that things could go wrong. But there's a motivation, there's, there's a, a joyful expression in that as well. And so what I'd suggest if some of you are facing uncertainty in your life, and uh, there is a lot of that in the world at the moment, mm -hmm. it's to rather change your mind about it and see it as a, an, ex an exciting time. You know, there's, a, there's an old Chinese curse, um, and it was, may you live in exciting times. And I, <laughs> I think we're all, yeah. we're all being cursed with that at the moment, exciting mm -hmm. times. So mm -hmm. it's exciting, to be excited is to embrace change, to allow change. And as Michelle said, to be the space that allows change to pass through, to, to, to come into your awareness and then flow through your awareness. And, and it's important now, because this is the feminine energy, the full moon, it's to fully feel those emotions that are arising within you because of the change that's going on in the world around us. Yeah, because change is always going to happen. And we often say that we want to evolve. Yeah, I'm, I'm evolving. I'm evolving consciousness. Uh, my consciousness is is rising. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to see if there's anything. There's little messages coming through. I wondered if there's a problem. I hope you can all hear us. Um, so we want to evolve. Evolution is change. That's what it means. Because as we are raising our frequency, so everything around us changes. That's that's you know. So when we sign up and we say, okay, we want to evolve our consciousness. We're signing up for change. Yeah. We are saying, okay, change, come on, yeah. bring it on. Because the old is not going to actually exist if we, if we, as we lift our frequencies, as we raise our frequencies, as we become more awake, more aware, more conscious. Other things might fall away. People might fall away. People might not resonate with us anymore. Um, situations might fall away. We might need to move out of an area or a situation or a job. And so the way I see it is the more we hang on to the status quo, which is this is what I know, this is, this is my comfort zone, this is what feels safe for me, we're actually imprisoning ourselves very often because we're actually not embracing the fact that we are shifting energy. That's what we are. So very often when people do change a lot or they change things a lot in their lives, it's seen as a bad thing. Oh, you know, so-and-so, he's had how many jobs and how many partners or whatever it is. But is it bad? Is it bad? Or is it just somebody's actually growing and evolving and changing? And so these situations change as well very often. So we can't judge that. It's just to, just to see that if we are on a journey of evolution and we are trying to actually clear our energy and move to higher states of consciousness, that's going to come along with change. And that's also going to come along very often with stretching ourselves through our comfort zones. So we might do something that might not feel comfortable. Like for example, somebody just said they're not comfortable in speaking to people uh, in public. I wasn't comfortable at all. I mean, I, I saw blind that I would never, ever, 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 ever <laughs> sit on this side of the camera. Never. I was on the other side of the camera doing the production. Um, and it's been a stretch for me to actually stretch through that and to say, okay, well, what is it actually? What is it actually that's stopping me from doing it? And it's my ego. It's our ego that stops us. Because we often think of ego as like the big you know, look at me, I'm so wonderful. But ego can be the other side as well, is I'm scared to make a fool of myself. And so it's stretching through those comfort zones as well. That's change. That's saying, okay, I embrace this. And I actually see this and I'm actually going to move through it. Because so what, it, what, if that's my unique expression, then why not just express that? And I believe that's what we've been called to do. Yeah. Mm. And part of this embracing change, I believe, is to embrace something that um, sits beneath the surface and uh, runs many of our lives. And it is the fear of death. Yes. The fear of death. Yes. And it can be, you know, the death of a career. It can be the death of a relationship. It can even be a physical death, either yourselves or someone around you that you're attached to. 
And I, I believe, as I wrote on a Facebook page this morning, that in, unless we embrace death, mm. we don't truly live. Because life is change. And death is a doorway for newness to be born. And without that doorway, newness can't be born. You know, if you look, for example, if you go for a walk in a forest, a very rich forest, you'll find death and decay all around you. And if you look closely at the death and decay, you'll see that it is providing the opportunity for new growth to happen. Now, in the human world, we, we try and, uh, you know, try and uh, hide death and we worship only growth. And that's completely insane. If you, you know, if you look at nature, there's growth and there's death. There's newness exactly. and there's dissolution. And that is happening all the time. That's natural. And in the Western world, we have made death unnatural. Something Scary. to be scared, something to be hidden away, not to be embraced. So part of this process that we're going through right now is to embrace death. Mm -hmm. When you embrace death, you realize that there is no such thing as death. It's an illusion. It's a transformation. It's like, I'm going to use that analogy of the wave again. Yes, the wave might crash onto the sea, but the ocean hasn't died. The ocean can't die. You cannot die. No one that you love can die. Love can't die. Only the form in which it takes can and will dissolve. There's no doubt about that. Don't worry about the form dissolving because the true essence, what you really love is never the form. It's always the formless that animates the form. And that cannot die. It's always here. In its fullness, it's always here. I know, um, what, about uh, 12, 13 years ago, my mother passed away in a car accident. And after she passed, now she lived a thousand odd kilometers away from, from where I was. And after she passed, I immediately felt a lot closer to her. I felt her mm. energy right with me. There wasn't that friction of distance anymore. You know, in the physical body, uh, you know, our energy is sort of like physical and separate. And when someone passes, you can connect more directly with them. They live within you. Mm. So to, to fear death is actually to fear life. You can't fully live if you, if you don't embrace death. And if you look at the process over the last year of controlling the human race, really, from a, from a fear-based perspective, it's all been about death. You can't control people if they're, not, if they're not afraid of dying, if they're not afraid of loss. You can't control people. And right now, there's huge percentage of people are controlled by this fear of death. Yeah. And it's an illusion. Let that, that illusion go. Yeah. You're going to have to go through that doorway. Everyone goes through that doorway. <laughs> can I get so, there I mean, why fear what you're going to go through anyway? And the one thing you're going to do successfully is you're going to die successfully because you're going to step through this realm into another realm. It's like moving from one door, from one room yeah. into a, a, a new room. Don't fear the next room. Look forward to it with excitement. Wow, I wonder what's around the corner. There was a lovely post which which Michelle put up, and I think I put up on on the on this Facebook page. Einstein. It's, what was her name? can't remember her name. It's an old, elderly lady. You must have a look on John's page. Yeah, lovely. Um, she's in her she's 80s. She's beautiful. And she's, and she's talking about this talking very about subject this. Of, of embracing life in its fullness and not fearing death. And four months later, the lady who did that talk did pass away. It was a TED talk. She was ready. And uh, she was ready to go. And it was a celebration of her life. And I think it's to live every single moment in the celebration of life, not in the fear of death. Let go of the fear of death. Now that is embracing change, allowing change to be there. People come and people go. And when people leave, there's an opportunity, an opening in your uh, play of life for new people to come in. That's, that's, that's to be celebrated. Yes, you do miss the people that go. But you, you're then providing an openness for new experiences to come into your awareness and to, to be open to the play of life. That is embracing change. Yeah, because as you said there, resisting death is resisting life. Because if, if, we, if we are under the impression or we have the, the map that we write our stories, which is what we're on that page, of we write our maps. I mean, I look at charts every day and I can see it very clearly that this is no mistake. Mm. This, is, this ain't no random universe. I mean, that I know 150 million percent. Um, so if that's the case, then the day that we're going to pass 
out of this pers this physical body has already been written. written. And written. Yeah. It's not. There's nothing that we can do to avoid that, or to delay it, or to or to push it forward. It's going to happen on the day and at the hour that it's going to happen. And so, to be in fear of it isn't going to stop it from happening. All it's going to stop us from doing is from living, because we're terrified of dying. It's crazy if you really think about it. It's crazy, but we are. There's this incredible fear people have of dying. So it's just to look at that. This and this is this is this theme that's been coming up all of last year and all of this year. It's just look at these things. Look at your fear of dying. What is it? What are you really scared of? And what are you scared of in terms of living? So what's stopping you from doing the things that you want to do? Because you're scared of actually embracing life. If you're scared of embracing death and change, you're scared of embracing life. So that's what this is a call for that is, yeah. is to actually step into and to open to it. Yeah. So if we if we're able to open to change and to say this too is going to change, okay, I'm opening. I'm not going to close, I'm not going to resist, I'm just going to open to this. And I'm going to open to this next change as well. Then it actually eases the passage of change. Otherwise it can be very, 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 very scary and you can create a lot of suffering. Yeah. The more you hang on. So one of the tools that we've given you to embrace change is to rather stand on something that doesn't change. And the only thing that doesn't change is not a thing. It's presence. It's life. It's your spirit. It's your true essence. And as you anchor your awareness more in that, more in presence, you can deal with all change. And the other tool that we can give you is that there are no accidents. You were not born accidentally on a certain day. And you don't die accidentally on a certain day. Your birth date and your death date is already written. You wrote your play and you wrote your entrance yeah. and your exit. And they are perfect. They're perfectly aligned with the stars, with the cosmos, with the intention of the universe itself. The universe intended you. Yeah. That's how special and how beautiful you are. You were intended by the universe to have a certain expression, a human expression, which enriches the whole. And that had a beginning date and an end date. That's just, it's just an experience. You cannot die and you will never die because you are the I am presence that looks through your eyes. That's who you really are. That's the ocean, the ocean of love, the divine essence of being is who you really are. And the form is just a vehicle for us to have this experience. Your body is a vehicle for experience. Relationships are a vehicle for experience. Houses, property, countries are all just vehicles for an experience. That's all they ever are. And they all have a birth date and they all have a death date. All of them. They come and they go. And that's, that's beautiful. You know, if you want to make, for example, a, a cake, what do you have to do? You have to get different... Um, um, ingredients and you like to put them all together you've got to break the egg you know and in the breaking and in the combining something brand new comes out so that tool is very important to know that you're not an accident your life is not an accident you weren't born on a certain accidental day and you will not die on an accidental day nope. accidents you know we, we say there's accidents no there's no such thing as accidents None at all. You didn't accidentally meet this person on this day. <laughs> and, uh, mm. you know, there are no accidents. It's all beautiful. It's a beautiful fabric. You know, it's a tapestry. And all these threads, they seem to be random. Mm. But they're not random. They form a magnificent picture. And as we stand back, so we see the magnificence of that. There was that lady, Anita Majani, and she wrote a book called Dying to Me. And she died of cancer, stage four cancer. Uh, she was riddled with cancer. She was in Hong Kong, and then she had this beautiful elevated experience where she stood back and she saw the, the incredible perfection of her life and all the different fabrics in her life. And that changed her absolutely completely. She, she actually came back into her body again, full recovery. recovery, and now she's a wonderful teacher, Anita Majani. Yeah, and she I'm says, afraid. you know, the, real, the, the only thing we really have to do, she said, because it troubles the mind. You know, what do I have to do? What's my life purpose? And she says, the only thing we ever have to do is shine. Mm -hmm. That's, that's our, that's our total job. Give and up worrying. 
And when you're shining, you can't worry. Worry cannot exist in the light of, of there's shining. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. There is nothing to worry about. So that's the, that's the really egoic mind way of looking at change is worry, 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 worry. Give up worry. Everything is perfect. Your life is perfect. Everything will unfold absolutely perfectly. Not according to your mind or your ego. You don't always get what you want, but you get definitely what you need. And your life is perfect. It's unfolding perfectly. And to embrace change. Because then you get the full depth of the Experience. gift of this moment. Yeah. If you don't embrace the present moment, you don't open the gift that is life. Because life is only ever now. It's the only time you get is presence. Yeah. So do you want to... Mm. I don't know if, if that was helpful. Hopefully it was. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully it was. Um, yeah. And so uh, thank you. If you have any other questions or comments, just write them up in the box there. A couple of things. Um, we've been doing this Sunday night uh, satsang now for well over a year. And we have not missed a Sunday. And we've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take a break for two Sundays. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, we're not... Uh, we're not um, we're not uh, going on holiday. We're actually going on a road trip. We're doing a retreat in Nikopo at the Buddhist Retreat Center. Mm. And so we have to drive there. We'll and so next Sunday we will be driving. Mm. And so we won't be able to do the um, satsang next Sunday. And the Sunday after that we'll be doing the retreat in yeah. Ikopo. And hopefully we'll see some of you there. Mm. I, don't, uh, I don't know if there's any spaces left uh, there. You have to speak to the Buddhist Retreat Center in Ikopo directly because yeah. they're handling the booking. And I know they were pretty full already. But um, hopefully, maybe, who knows, the cancellation and you can still come and still book. So it's worthwhile contacting them uh, directly, the BRC in a COPA. So we will be missing the, the next two Sundays. And then after that, we'll be back again. Mm -hmm. So in three Sundays time, we'll be back. Yeah. And the other uh, announcement is that um, we have a support platform, an ongoing uh, online support platform called Inner Space. And it's about connecting to that That's ocean beautiful. of being. Yeah. So it helps you find that stability, that security, despite the whirlwind of change around us. So Inner Space, it's a monthly platform. You just join month by month. You can sign up for a year. If you sign up for a year, you get two months free. That's Inner Space. And that's available to join on our website, which is journeysofawakening.com. And what you get when you join is you get two Zoom, 90-minute Zoom sessions with us. So two times in a month uh, we have that month, session. Yeah. And then we have a wonderful journal which you there's do. Journal mm. prompts, there's creative exercises, you have meditation, and you get, most importantly, the community support. So we've got a really, really beautiful community. And in May, I mean, yeah, May, we are working with self-worth, which is a huge one. Yeah, because that's the basis. I mean, in all the work that we've done, that's the bear, that's the core. Mm. If you don't have any self worth, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to navigate your life with ease and love. So that's going to be a beautiful self -worth, month. Yeah. So join us if you like, just for the month. Yeah, that's join us. Self worth. That's that's really worthwhile. And we'll be starting another us. journey to freedom in June. Uh, at the moment, it looks like the 10th of June. So 10th we'll, of June, we'll, that's we'll a 13 week. We'll go through on that this week. Yeah, that's a 13 week transformational course which we do. And so that'll be 10th of June, we'll start the new one. Yeah, it looks yeah, like that's 10th the date. 10th of June, yeah. yeah. So join uh, in a space. Now, one, I mean, as Michelle mentioned, there's a community there. And when we're going through change and uncertainty, it's really good to have like minded people supporting us. And you'll find at the moment, probably in your own awareness, that people that you used to rely on and used to support you, they're not there for you now, or you can't even communicate them with them because you've shifted and they're yeah, on a different plane. Shifted. And it's really nice to find a community of people who share your common um, inspiration, aspirations, um, spiritual insights. So Inner Space, that's a lovely platform. And uh, yeah, I think May is going to be a beautiful month for that. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Um, Michelle's going to lead us oh, out with a, with a meditation. Mm. And then don't disappear because we've got some lovely affirmation. We're going to give you an affirmation for the week ahead, the full moon mm. week ahead. So we're going to select yeah. one of those. Yeah. Okay. So let's just all settle in. won't be a very long meditation. Just take a lovely deep breath in. And then a releasing, relaxing breath out. Just let it all go. And now... 
Bring another deep breath in through the belly and all the way up, 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 up into the chest. And then on the out breath, sigh it all out. Just sigh it all, shake it out. Just let go of whatever you don't need in this moment. And start to just drop into, if you're not already, into a place of real presence. Just connect with your breath. As it flows in and it flows out. Just noticing that in any moment this breath is breathing you. And this is the breath of change. On each in breath, each in breath is different from each out breath. This is a unique breath that you're taking right now that you've never taken before. Just allow yourself to really settle in. So imagine that you're just drifting to this really quiet, centered place. So imagine now that you are walking through a beautiful field and in front of you, you see an incredibly beautiful tree. A big, big, really strong, gorgeous tree. Standing very proudly in the center of this field. And as you walk towards this tree, just really take in the wonder of this tree. It may have been here many hundreds of years. Imagine walking towards this tree, placing your hands on the bark. You might lean your cheek against the tree. You might hug the tree. Imagine that you can feel the energy of this beautiful tree. And I imagine standing with your back against the tree, leaning against the tree, so that you almost become one with the tree. You can almost feel that you are part of this beautiful tree, this beautiful being from nature that has been growing and standing here for possibly centuries. And imagine that you could feel the roots of this tree going deep, deep, deep into Mother Earth. And that those roots spread out as a network, connecting to other trees, moving through the ground, communicating with other plant life. And this root system really holds this tree firm so that it can withstand the seasons. just really supports this tree, these roots. And then imagine that you're actually looking up into the branches of this beautiful tree. How this tree shines and spreads its branches up to the sky, reaches for the light. Brings the light in. So that it will nourish and nurture the tree. In this moment, imagine that you are this tree. You've withstood many storms in your life. You've withstood many hard winters. You may have lost a few branches which may have left you feeling desolate for a little bit until a new little branch or new something started growing there. Every season you maybe lost leaves. You watched them turn to different colours and fall to the ground. 
being absorbed back into Mother Earth, into the cycle of life and death. And yet the tree stands and the energy of the tree continues to flow through this tree, receiving light from the sun, receiving nourishment from the earth, receiving water, receiving air, standing firm, standing strong. Feel the peace and stillness of this tree. And know that in the midst of life's storms, you tree does. Completely rooted to this moment. Supported in this moment. Connected to all of life in this moment. And that by embracing change, you're embracing life. Just feel that. Let that seep into your cells. And on this, the eve of the full moon, just connect with anything that you would really like to release from your life. Anything that might not be serving you. Anything that might be holding you small when you could be shining. Standing strong. And set the intention to release that this full moon. And now bring your attention back to your breath. You can imagine thanking the tree for this experience. Knowing that at any time if you feel a bit shaky, you might be able to visit this tree again if this has helped you. Take a nice deep breath in. And a relaxing, releasing breath out. And when you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Mm, that was beautiful, eh? Hey? Beautiful. I have such an affinity for trees. Yeah, I love trees. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, trees, Tree are, person. trees are our best. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they are our best. That was beautiful. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Let's, do, let's choose an affirmation card. Now, the reason we do an affirmation card every week is because our brains are a filter for reality. And sometimes they limit our perception of reality. So what affirmations are, they're tools to rewire the brain so we can then perceive a, a different um, environment, a different reality. And as we change our minds, so we change the world around us. So affirmations are very powerful tools. So they're repeated over and over again to rewire our brain and allow us to, to see new opportunities and to see the world very differently. Very so every week we choose one of these cards and it's my job to choose today. I'm going to choose a blue card. Mm. And the blue card hmm. says, <laughs> okay, I let go of emotional resistance and allow life to flow as it is. Now, perfect. Isn't that perfect that's for the perfect. full moon, hey? Yeah, that's perfect. I let go of emotional resistance and allow life to flow as it is. So I'll put that up on that's the really Facebook good. page on John Homewood 7, and you can have a look at that. Maybe even print it out and uh, stick really it on your bathroom mirror or your steering wheel. And say this not 10 times a day, say it 200 times a day. And that will rewire your brain. It will really help you see a new earth and a new world. And it will help you deal with the emotions at the moment. So thank you for being with us tonight. We look forward to catching up with you in three weeks time. And uh, for those of you going to join our inner space, we'll see you before then. Yes. So wonderful. Bless you. Thank you for being with us. And can you do us one last favor? Just press the like and the share button because it spreads the light out there. It helps us, this you. transmission go out to a much wider much wider audience. So if you can, just press the like button and share. And we're getting lots of hearts. Thank, Thank you very much hearts. for all that. Thank you and bless you. And we look forward to catching up with you again. We love you lots.
Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Nighty night. Lots of love.